Hey everybody, welcome back to Tens of Motorsports. Today we have back with us our wagon. We're going to be rewrapping the A, B, and C pillars. As everybody knows with the E46, this tends to happen. And it doesn't matter if it's a coupe, sedan, wagon, convertible, this tends to happen. Now, I can't speak for the convertible because I don't actually remember what the C pillar looks like, but this is a C pillar out of this car, which if any of you know, is a lot less complicated than the C pillar in the sedan or the coupe. So we're going to be going over to an upholstery shop because last time I did this, probably seven or eight years ago when I had my first BMW, I did it with some black fabric that was a little bit too thick. And in the front, uh, as I started to put it back together, it was really tight. Like, it looked fine, that's why I left it, and everything stuck really well after I had installed the fabric, but it was really thick. This is not standard fabric, so I'm gonna take it to an upholstery shop and get their opinion on what type of fabric I should be using. We're just gonna be doing this black, and that gives us the opportunity to pick kind of whatever black we want because then I don't have to worry about matching the headliner. If you try to go for this color, it better be exact and similar to car paint. If you paint like a bumper and you don't paint the rest of the car, you gotta make sure the bumper matches the paint even though if you do it per the paint code, it's gonna be a little bit different. Same thing with this, even the headliner can change colors on you. So we're just gonna be doing them black and then we don't have to worry about that. The headliner in this car is actually in really good condition, which is one of the reasons why I got this particular wagon. If you get a car with a bad headliner, that could be um, $800 to $1,000, depending on the car, to get that fixed. And when we were trying to get a car for like $1,500 to $2,000, a bad headliner would have completely blown the budget out on getting a good condition wagon. So because it's getting a little bit late in the day and I need to go and get these taken to my upholstery shop, that I'm gonna be going to, I've kinda of gotta be a little bit quick with the A and B pillar. So when I get back, we'll take off the passenger side and I'll do that on camera and show everybody how to do it. It's super simple on a wagon and it's very similar A and B pillars to the other E46s. Obviously the C pillar is a little bit different. This one literally, there's just a clip here and then it comes forward and slides up. So really simple to get the C pillar out. So I'm gonna go get the A and B pulled out on the driver's side, take them over, get some upholstery, and then when we come back, I'll be taking out the other side on camera. I will be rewrapping these myself. I've done it before. Let's get these taken out and head over to the upholstery shop. All right, so we are back from going and grabbing some new fabric. I went over to the upholstery shop and he didn't have the stuff there, but he pointed me to Joann's and told me exactly what to get, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to go to an actual upholstery shop so that I could talk to somebody who knew what was going on and could give me some good advice. Ignore this, it looks really bad. Um, we did find some Bondo, so we're gonna be working on that in a different video, so just, just ignore that. Let's continue on with removing the A, B, and C pillar. So this is an A pillar here, and like I said earlier, uh, this should be the same process for the other BMWs. Don't quote me on the convertible because I've never really owned, in fact, I've, I've never owned a convertible E46. So for the A pillars, there is a really long strip that runs along here. The older these cars get, the more fragile these get. So if you can get these off without breaking them, that's great. If not, like this one, all the tabs just exploded off the back as soon as I pulled it off. And that goes like, this over all of the screws so you don't see any of the screws from the front of the car. And you don't actually see this section while you're sitting in there. You only really see this when you're outside the car looking through the windshield. So yeah, you wanna make sure that you're really careful with these. If those break, they're not really expensive. I think these are $25 a piece. So I mean, that'd save you 50 bucks if you can get them off without being destroyed. So once that has been removed, there are three screws. And then what you kinda wanna do with this, so this would be on the driver's side like this, you kinda wanna pull it away from the top and then pull it out of the bottom. There is a little bit of a hook right here. Uh, this one broke off, but I'm just gonna rewrap this and put it in there. It's not really important to have that on there, but obviously if you can get it out without breaking that again. Uh, I didn't break up very far, so once this slides back down into the dash, you won't see where that was supposed to be. And these screws are really long and they're really strong. So this isn't gonna like come out if this is missing. So that's the A pillar. The B pillar is gonna be the most complicated to get off. Pop off the panel that sits below this. You'll wanna undo the little pressure push tabs that are at the bottom of this, and then you'll slide down 
and out. If you pull straight out, you'll bust the tabs in the back of this. Then once this is away from the B pillar, you'll undo the seat belt. So this has a 15 millimeter bolt that's holding in the bottom of the seat belt. You'll slip the seat belt through and then you can pop that piece out of the back that slides up and down. Again, be careful when you're pulling like this so that you don't break it. Once they're taken off, we'll be cleaning them up. So we'll be pulling off all this old fabric. It looks like somebody's tried to glue this before because there's a bunch of really nasty glue around the edges. So we'll pull all that off, clean it up, and then I will show everybody the fabric that I bought and why I bought it. And then I'll also show what glue we're gonna be using. Last time I did this project, I used 3M. Joann's didn't have 3M while I was there, so I grabbed a different brand. I can't remember off the top of my head what it is. We'll go over that in just a sec. So let's get the passenger side removed and then go from there. So here is the glue we're gonna be using. This is force field headliner adhesive and it says high temperature. So this is high temperature, water resistant, and high strength. And here is the fabric. It is a nice dark black and it only stretches one way. So it doesn't stretch this way, but it stretches this way. So when we wrap this, the stretch is gonna go this way. And that's how we're gonna wrap this. This is way more stretchy than what I used last time. I think when I first did this, the cloth I was using didn't have any give in it at all. I'm gonna be reading the instructions on the back of this to make sure that I give this glue, this fabric, and these pillar pieces the best chance of looking like they should. All right, everybody, here is all eight pieces, the two thin ones that click into these, then your C pillars and your B pillars. These right here are being painted. They're actually drying as we speak. I gotta be careful with this one because it's not completely cured yet. I just used some black plastic paint. You can get uh, paint that's designed for interior plastics, that would be just fine. This buckle that sits right here kind of comes out just a little bit, so your seatbelt doesn't necessarily touch the surface. So you shouldn't actually see it rubbing off the black. If it bugs you and it's starting to come off, it's not a big deal. These are really easy to take back off like we explained earlier in the video, so you could actually go online and buy a set of black ones if it's really starting to bother you. The last time I did this, I painted these black and I owned the car for another year or so, and I never saw any of the plastic coming off. And it was a sedan, so it'll be the same B pillars as this wagon we're doing. I did not have to restart a single one of these. I wrapped every single one of them perfect the first time. This fabric was awesome. Just make sure you get some with a little bit of stretch and that it's thin enough. So oftentimes these, if you wrap these around the back and then you wrap this, it'd be too thick and they won't actually lock in like they're supposed to. So just make sure you're getting fabric that's thin enough. And as much as I'd love to, and it's a bit of a buzzkill not to be able to put these back in the car, I'm actually gonna wait to reinstall these until the car is done getting painted and all the dirty work is done. What I don't wanna do is reinstall these and end up having something get damaged or stained. I'd be really upset. So very similar to the seats and the steering wheel that we're gonna be swapping over to the wagon when we're done with it, these are gonna to have to wait until I'm almost completely done with the build. But other than that, this was very, very simple to do. I'm very happy with the way this turned out. As we sit right now, I am in this entire project between the fabric gluing it down and the paint to do this, 30, 
$5. Now for comparison, I did ask the local upholstery shop while I was there how much they would charge me to do this project and they quoted me close to $400 just for what you see right here and that wouldn't include painting these. So I think $35 is absolutely a way better deal than having my local upholstery shop do it for close to $400. Thanks for watching. We are giving away a $100 ECS tuning gift card. All you have to do to participate in that is follow our Instagram at Tenza underscore motorsports. Also, while you're down in the description, check out our Patreon. Early ad-free access of our content is available for just a dollar a month. That helps our channel out a lot. Thanks everybody again so much for watching. We will see everybody in the next video.